big breath. Oh, guess what? You're ADD and ADHD now. <laughs> now you see, when you guys, I should ask, does anyone here have ADD and ADHD? You might. You, know, you, might. Know. you might be a little hyperactive. They, they didn't have medicine back then. Yeah, they didn't have medicine back then. <laughs> When you guys meditate, it's a very usually very calm. Your thoughts kind of flow. When I meditate, because I have ADD and ADHD, that's kind of what I hear. As a Buddhist, that's a little hard to do. <laughs> I'm not exactly the best Buddhist, but I do try. But this is constantly going off in my head. Now there is a reason for this. Does anyone know exactly what ADD ADHD is? Anyone have anything other than the hyperactivity yeah. stuff? Like what it stands for? Or, or what, what, it, what I mean is, what do you think it has to do with your brain? What it causes your brain to do? Wander? Mm -hmm. It causes it to wander. I'll give you an example. The best way to show it, and there were many diagrams of different brains doing different things because ADD and ADHD, unlike how we talked about dyslexia, is on the frontal lobe. ADD and ADHD is throughout the brain particularly in the front and in the middle and a little bit in the black, in the back. So there are many diagrams for it. This is the best way to explain it. Your mind moves like this. My mind moves like this. It's very, very fast. And when that happens, when your mind moves like this, you can process things. You can hear people talk. You can understand it. Like this, you're not catching anything your mind is moving too fast for the other person, for the information to even get to your brain. Like you say to a um, normal child, you say, okay kids, today we're going to do a uh, periglot drill, and of course we're also going to work jab, jab, punch. They only caught maybe peri block and then punch at the end, because they're really, they're trying to pay attention, but it's just not happening for them, and it's not without them not trying. So there are also moments where we have many children who, because it's starting to become more and more um, normal in society, it's becoming a lot less rare than it was, where we'll be teaching a child and you guys will be teaching a child and suddenly they go, and you've lost them. <laughs> it's not because they're like, oh, I'm totally bored with this, what else can I look at? It's just because it's, that's just what their mind does, because to them you've already said what you need to. Now the other downside to this is you'll be saying something to a child, probably constructive, like, oh, that was a really good punch, but we can make it a little bit better, how we say praise, correct, praise. To that child you just said, oh my god, that was, that was an awful punch, do it again. Because their mind moves fast and that's all they process, like, oh, you didn't do it right. Because they're not patient. So try to remember that when you're teaching a child. 